Hey everybody, welcome back to Cinefix. We are getting started with what some folks might call a limited run series or something like that. We're gonna do a series of conversations about each and every one of the nine Best Picture nominees. So for each of the nominees, we're going to do a video that presents the case for and the case against that movie winning the Best Picture. And we're gonna be bringing in some special guests to have these conversations with us, including this very video. We brought Mark Ellison, our good friend from Collider's Movie Talk. You may know him from Schmoes Knows. You may know him from life for all I know uh, but he is very funny and he's a blast to talk movies with and he and I sat down and talked about the merits of three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. What did, you, what did you think of this movie in general? They are outside Ebbing, Missouri. Yeah. I can't confirm that. I kept having different you know, like, is it inside Missouri or it's like right on the border? It's actually outside of Ebbing, Missouri. So if you're leaving the town, right. you're like, I've had enough of this town. Wait, what are these billboards about? I gotta, I gotta turn around I gotta and go back and check this out. Yeah, I gotta have a word with my local yeah. police authority. I think it'd be great, if just for families on vacation in Missouri, if they're driving by, they see the three billboards, they're like, hey kids, you wanna go talk to the constable? You wanna go have a word with him about what went down in this <laughs> Let's town? go talk to Chief Willoughby real but th quick. That's why I think this movie is gonna win the Oscar for Best Picture, is because it's such a, it's such a message movie, it's such a socially conscious movie, and when you look at what the Oscars love doing, they love taking the year that just happened and saying, what were the big political messages in this year, and what movie most well represents that, and there's two movies. I think The Post does to a certain extent with the freedom of the press and what the limitations are, but Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, I mean, that movie is about men that are holding down the desire of a woman to get her story out there. And you have a woman who is so hurt by what has happened to, in this case, her daughter, or whether it's herself or whoever, that finally cannot stay silent anymore. That's what happened in Hollywood, and it was a great thing that it got out that it did in 2017. And so if the Oscars can say, you know what, that message deserves a statue, and the movie's pretty damn good too, I think it gets to the trophy. I totally agree with, with most of that. Right, I think that especially you look at the last couple of years, we're trending that direction with what Spotlight did, with what Moonlight did last year. Right. The direction of the socially conscious uh, movie needs to get the trophy, which is which is great. It's wonderful. Different stories of different people need to get out there. Uh, I love it. Yeah, and I think that's why the Oscars are important. It's really the only reason they're important. Yeah, because you're rewarding a, a fake thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Real quick tangent. Where do you land on the? How much weight do you put behind the Oscars in general? I don't care about them at all. I don't either. No, I don't. <laughs> but which is why I root for people who like. I want them to have an Oscar. You know, like you get in the Hall of Fame in baseball because you were such a great baseball player. Mm -hmm. So with a guy like somebody like Gary Oldman or or, or Meryl Streep, it's like yeah, these are all time greats. So I like seeing greatness rewarded. But if it's a movie, it's the producers. I don't care about the suits. Clint. Right. Right. I, I root for the movie that got a nice message out. And if that movie can't be called The Last Jedi, then I'll say the billboard one. There's too much space in that movie. <laughs> Never going to get nominated for anything. So look, I, back to three billboards. I, I don't disagree with you in that the social message of it was there. My problem with the movie, and, and ultimately I didn't like this movie at all. Really? Yeah. It teed up all of those questions. It teed up so many different conversations. The one you talked about, about, about uh, keeping a woman's story down, it, there's... There's racial uh, things going on. There's police brutality things going on. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff going on, but then didn't add anything to those conversations. Ultimately, I think it's like a really hollow kind of movie. Like it wants to be a part of the conversation, but it didn't pay anything off in any sort of interesting way to add anything to the conversation. I don't think it had anything to say about police brutality or about uh, the, the Me Too movement or about anything else. Because ultimately what the movie did was just, it escalated the shitty things that shitty people were doing to each other in shitty ways. But that's what's great about the movie is that it involves the audience in the conversation. Is that when you're leaving the theater after seeing three billboards, you want to sit down and talk not just about how great Francis McDormand was or Sam Rockwell, but you actually sit down and you hash out the issues that were laid out in the movie. Now the movie didn't complete everything, I agree. There's a lot of half-baked ideas in there, but I'm also the guy that when I order Little Caesars, I hope that crazy bread's a little underdone because the doughy crazy bread is the only kind of crazy bread. It was nothing but undercooked crazy bread in this movie. <laughs> so I, I agree with you there. It actually works, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't even mind things being open-ended because the ending of this movie was very open-ended. Mm -hmm. Like, that's fine. There's no, like, I, I, I can appreciate a movie that leaves it up to you to interpret things, but you got to have a foundation about what this movie is actually about or at least half a stance that the movie's taking. And that's, that was my problem with the movie is like, the performances stood out. 
Francis McDormand was great. Sam Rockwell was great. But the movie, it didn't look particularly good. Like, the cinematography wasn't anything special. The production design, none of that was particularly special. The story was, was I think, really hollow. And it just, it, it smells like Crash, is what it smells like to me. And Which that, also won Best Picture. I know. And one of the reasons why Crash was able to take home the Best Picture when it might not have deserved it is because, look at the other movies that are in a lot of categories, right? So you have The Shape of Water. I think Guillermo's going to win Best Director for that. And the Academy, when they can't really decide on which movie they like the best, they like to spread the ball around, as we saw a great example of when they rigged it to where La La Land and Moonlight both get to be on stage last year. So if you have movies that get nominated and they know who the best actor or best actress is going to be, Martin McDonough left off the list for best director at the Oscars, which might be an indication that I think the it's Academy very telling that doesn't not think the best it's as favorable. Yeah. But... Shape of Water, if you reward that for Best Director, I think that opens the avenue to give three billboards the edge. I mean, the movie is very open-ended, and it leaves you asking a lot of questions, but not every movie is going to have that clean ending, especially when you're the mom and your daughter can't come back and high-five you after what it's this not, adventure we went that's on. That's not the ending that I'm rooting for. And I, the open-endedness is fine. You don't want a fine. ghost daughter? Leave me <laughs> ghost daughter high-five. Yeah. She's a force ghost, and it's all part of the Star Wars universe. Ah, now um, Broom Kid is going to date her. Disney's going to own Searchlight soon enough, so it'll, they'll, they'll go back and re-edit it. Uh, but, like, I don't mind leaving the theater asking questions. I love that. That's great. But the questions need to be something besides, like, what the hell was that? Having assholes be assholes on screen. I don't mind anti-heroes. It's not that. But, like, there needs to be a point to it, and they're just, they just didn't stick the landing with any of the conversations that they, that they started. So I think no way should it win the Oscar. I'm going to be furious when it does. Well, it, it will because a lot like me on Twitter in 2017, mm -hmm. it brought up a lot of issues and didn't resolve any of them because I didn't have the characters, Clint. I didn't have the characters. And that's what this movie lacked is that it didn't close up the way that it opened because it opened very strong with look at what's going on here and here and in this corner of America and didn't resolve all of it, but it still has us talking. It's the most socially conscious movie of 2017. And for better or for worse, that's what award shows do because this isn't the Super Bowl. This isn't the World Series where there's going to be a clear-cut winner. We have to vote with our hearts, and my heart is telling me that Three Billboards is going to beat the uh, merman making love to the mute girl. Unfortunately, I, I really agree with you. I'm scared to death that this is going to win. You're scared to death, really? Yeah. Here lies Clinton Gage. Died. Dying. Of Three Billboards winning an Oscar. Died of Three Billboards-related fear. I look forward to giving your eulogy. I'm like, I told him. Yeah. I told him to prepare. I'm going to need a big tombstone to fit all that up. You know what? I'm going to give you better than a tombstone. I'm going to make you a billboard, Clint. Oh, perfect. Mark, thanks for being here, man. Where can people find you? Oh, Clint. I mean, I don't want to be the guy that comes on here and tells you that I'm at the Funny Bone in Omaha, February 9th through the 11th. You know, I'm not going to be the guest that has to shill my gig at Portland Helium, March 3rd through the 5th. I'm not going to be that guy. Okay. Well, good. Well, then we can skip this part. Yeah. I mean, you know, I do have a website that's marklslive.com, but I don't feel the need to mention it in this segment. Again, thanks to Mark for coming in, and make sure you check out everything he's got going on at marklslive.com. And let us know what you think of Three Billboards' chances down in the comments. Be sure to subscribe to Cinefix so you don't miss the rest of our Best Picture Debate series. We'll see you next time. Thank you.